Hey guys, it's Monday, May 1st. I've decided that I'm going to bring you along uh, for the whole process of my next knitting project. Um, something I mentioned in my April podcast episode, I'm going to cast on the Levitate Wrap next. Um, what is it? Um, it is from My Favorite Things Knitwear and it is just so cozy looking um sorry i'm looking at the screen here i will share my screen with you guys so you can see what i'm looking at but the way that they've done the photo shoot for this wrap sweater it just evokes all of the coziness that I want for myself. So it is a wrap cardigan, um, no buttons. It crosses over and it's secured by a tie at the hip or just above below the waist. I'm not quite sure where it lands. And this is part of the Isayer Breeze collection. And the suggested yarn, the original sample holds two yarns together SAR Yarn Trio 1 and SAR Yarn Eco Soft. I'm not familiar with those yarns. I actually never used any SAR yarn myself. It's not super accessible for me. Um, I can see here on Ravelry it's saying that I could order this online from Unit, which is a shop in Toronto. But for my budget and just because I wanted to work on this right away i found a yarn at a local yarn shop and it is cascade yarns ecological wool and it's 100 percent undyed peruvian wool and it is just a beautiful kind of natural gray slightly beige color and yeah it is undyed so that's what drew me to when i first kind of discovered or found this yarn online uh, i knew that i wanted to have it however i didn't want to buy it online because i wasn't sure how it felt i wasn't sure you know if it was going to be too rustic for me or not but it's actually quite soft um it's not the softest thing but i think i will be more than comfortable with this near um, next to skin so the combination of the yarns used in the original sample, the pattern gauge is 15 stitches and 22 rows. And I chose this yarn because it says on the label 14 to 16 stitches for the stitch gauge. And the needle size that's recommended is five and a half to six millimeters. And six millimeters is what's listed on the levitate wrap pattern. So haven't done my swatch yet but i figured that it should get me pretty close if not on gauge and the reason why i've decided to go with this pattern even though i have said that i'm trying to reduce how many oversized garments i make i think this will just be a really cozy replacement for a Sherpa zip up that I wear at home a lot. It's really worn out. It definitely needs to be replaced. It's gone to the point where I don't want to wear it out of the house, even if it's going to be a layer under my jacket because it just, it just looks a little tired. So I'd like to replace that. And with it being a wrap cardigan, it should be easy to put over whatever I'm wearing, whether it's pajamas, like in this photo shoot um in the sample photos online or it could be an actual proper outfit that i leave the house in and i'm hoping that this is a nice transition layer that i can wear out when i don't need an actual jacket and it's not pouring rain outside so i get to replace my cozy sherpa really worn out jacket but also get something nice to wear outside but still cozy for inside so that is kind of my logic um, behind it why i'm going to accept another oversized sweater into my wardrobe 
I might be able to adjust the armhole maybe so I don't have huge armholes. I haven't actually purchased the pattern yet, so I don't know. It is a drop shoulder pattern, so I'm pretty sure it's within my abilities to adjust the sleeve of our armhole diameter. So the potential exciting thing about this project is that it is listed here for the smallest size, 850 meters of yarn is required. And I just have two of these and which are 437 meters each. So I would have 874 meters. So I don't know if yarn requirements include the yarn that you make for a swatch. So I might have to harvest from my swatch, but I didn't want to buy a third one because I'd have so much excess. So I am excited to see how accurate the yarn requirements is. And just to see if I can really get a really lovely wrap cardigan out of um, these two skeins. I mean, they are huge skeins, but excited about that. And so for my gauge swatch for this one, I want to make sure it is really accurate. I'm going to measure it before and after wash and block just to see how much growth there is, if there is growth, so that while I'm knitting up the cardigan, I can make judgment calls on whether you know I can knit that extra row or round row because this is going to be knit flat I'm pretty sure um so that I can you know ensure that I actually get a full cardigan out of these two skates so that is what I'm going to do while Darcy naps she's actually still awake right now it's getting pretty close to her nap time now if you're new here um I do a lot of my knitting that needs more brain power while my daughter is napping in the afternoon because uh, my husband doesn't work from home, so I'm alone and I don't get interrupted usually during that time. So I will wind up this yarn. Although now looking at the size of this, I don't know if my, if my winder, my ball winder can handle this much yarn into a cake. So I may end up winding this up by hand, which I might. That could be just a fun, relaxing, sit on the couch, pop on something on the TV, hand wind some yarn, and then um, start my swatch and hopefully it dries and I can actually make a decision and cast on the project tomorrow. I was trying out a method I saw on Instagram the other day, a reel. Uh, yeah, I think I might just abandon ship and get my ball winder out, see how much I can fit into a cake, and figure out something from there because this is this is taking too long, and this is a lot of yarn over here. So. I need the ball winder out. The actual ball winder, not my me. I just finished caking up my yarn. Hey Tiberius. So definitely way too much yarn to use on the size of ball winder I have, but I was able to split it up into two cakes and because this comes in a like, twisted hank form, you definitely need to wind up the yarn. But for the first one, I started from one end of the hank and then found the other end of the hank and caked up this one. So these are attached. I did not break the yarn. Um, so I will keep them together. I will start center pull from the first and you know, work my way into the second, but this is one 
full hank or skein of the Cascade Ecological Wool. Hey guys, day two, Tuesday, May 2nd. It's also my dad's birthday today. Happy birthday to my dad. Uh, quick update for you guys. Um, things happened. So I did my swatch. Here it is. And it wasn't fully dry last night, uh, but my husband was working late. So when I put Darcy to bed, I had some time to myself. And I decided to just go ahead and cast on. For my gauge swatch for this one, I want to make sure it is really accurate. I'm going to measure it before and after wash and block. Now, last night when I measured my swatch, I thought I was about two stitches off gauge, so too large. Uh, so like 13 stitches uh, instead of 15. So I figured based on that, that I was going to cast on with five millimeter needles. And I cast on and I did a good chunk of the back yoke. So all of the increases were done. And then I was looking at it this morning as well as my, you know, now dried swatch. And my gauge of my swatch was actually only one stitch off. And holding the work that I had done, it was a bit too crisp. Um, and I mean, like, you know, it wasn't as drapey. So this swatch with slightly larger off gauge really has a nice... Um, drape to it uh, but my whip definitely did not and it was coming in uh, too tight or small of a gauge so it turns out that my live knitting when I'm actually making this cardigan versus the tension um, when I was making my swatch um, my tension actually knitting up the cardigan is tighter than my swatch tension so I had to make a decision. Was I going to frog everything that I had done last night? Part of me thought, okay, maybe it would block out. So I thought about starting from the other end of my skeins and just going to a different needle size. I also thought about just blocking what I had done, but I didn't want to wait for it to dry. So a bit of impatience kind of won over and I just decided to frog everything that I did last night and I'm pretty much back to the point at which I'd frogged I think I have maybe three or four more increase rows to do and then I'm exactly back to where I was last night but this is 5.5 millimeter millimeter I don't know why that's it's a struggle for me today to say that um the fabric feels nice. It's definitely less crisp and more drapey than the five millimeters. Um, doesn't feel quite as drapey as my swatch, but maybe it will get closer to that once this is actually washed and blocked. Uh, but here it is. You can see all my increases here. Looking pretty neat. Hopefully this kind of relaxes more after a nice block because it is kind of pulling in at the moment and I did a quick measure of my work so far and it's definitely a lot closer to the actual gauge so that's good and yeah using the 5.5 millimeter needles so I am much happier with this and so I will just keep knitting along and check back in with you guys later
Hey guys, it's Thursday, May 4th. May the 4th be with you. Yes, I am a Star Wars fan. No, I'm not wearing any Star Wars today, but I did wear my Star Wars shirt for volleyball yesterday. Um, yeah, who am I? I'm wearing a dress again. Uh, for those who don't know me, which is pretty much all my viewers, <laughs> I typically don't wear a lot of dresses. Um, but it's been great warm start to me and Darcy makes me a little bit girly and want to wear dresses so she's girly likes to wear dresses so I am joining the dress trend with her okay so I have been knitting every day um for me on the levitate wrap and I've had no issues so just knitting along great I have already done the front right and I'm on the left. That doesn't look like anything. <laughs> uh, but yeah, there's the back yoke, the front right with the increases to make the kind of V opening and now I'm on the left front yeah uh, the pattern has been very clear um, when picking up stitches from the back portion it doesn't tell you which side to start picking up the stitches but it does tell you that you know the first row that you work is a wrong side row so you can kind of figure it out from there which direction you pick up your stitches but really you just you're looking at the right side of your fabric and working from right to left when you pick up your stitches and yeah it feels like it's knitting up quick i am not quite at the halfway point of my skein so that's good um not worried about yarn chicken yet but I feel like that is something that's going to be a concern when I finish up the edges and have to knit up the ties for this wrap but yeah that is today's update and my husband is away from work so I will most definitely get in some more knitting time uh, this evening and yeah I will just keep you guys updated. Happy Cinco de Mayo. It's May 5th, day five, working on my levitate wrap. And I decided that I wanted to try it on and see how it goes. I didn't bother adjusting the armhole at all. I know I mentioned that I don't like really big armholes, but um, not an issue. In my size anyways you can see I've got a relatively fitted t-shirt on and the armhole's not huge which is good I mean when it blocks it's gonna go a little bit bigger but yeah looking good so far and see where it's gonna cross over here um, looks like I have shoulder pads on because you know as you know stocking it really rolls in but I'm pretty sure that will block out real nicely but yeah I'm happy with the fit so far i'm glad it's not super oversized which makes me think um and skeptical about what size the model in the, like the cabin photos like the photo shoot photos what size she's actually wearing because it looks really oversized on that model um and i don't recall reading anything about the size or the amount of ease on that particular model so We'll see. Um, I don't recall my fabric growing a whole bunch, but I'm okay if it's not really big. I mean, this is really bunched up on my cable right now, but I'm actually happy if it turns out to be less positive ease as prescribed in the pattern because I don't wear really oversized clothing very well. Um, but yeah, anyways, there's my first try on. Let's see if I can 
turn around and get you guys the shoulder. Not really. My hair is in the way. Sorry. <laughs> I'm going to set up for this. Let's see. Let's try this again. There you go. Yeah, and then that should block out real nicely after as well. Uh, okay. Thank you for enduring some of the that shaky cam. Sorry guys, that was a bit wobbly for you. Hey guys, it's May 17th. It's been a little while since I gave a last uh, verbal update on the cardigan and that's mostly because it's just been going swimmingly. Um, the only area or spot in the pattern that I thought was a little off was a stitch count for the row where you join the front panels to the back um, because in that same row if I read it correctly you also do um, increases for the crossover part and I felt like that stitch count total did not include those two increases but then later on when it has another stitch count total um, and based on the number of increases done, um, that number is correct. 
But if you add up the numbers from the instructions where you first join all the fronts and the backs, um, it's different from the stitch count total. But anyways, not a huge deal. Um, apologize. I can't tell you if that affected the other sizes because when I, I try to work from memory from uh, the pattern. So I really try hard to avoid reading the numbers from the other sizes. So I didn't check if the math was off for that, but just something to look out for. But it's really easy to check if you know how many increases you've done. Um, and if you missed it, like it's really only off by two stitches. So it's not a huge deal. Um, like in the long term of the how the cardigan ends up, I don't see it being a bit big issue, but I just noticed that. Um, so where am I at? I have finished completely one sleeve and I'm about to finish the second. And this sleeve, oh, and I have finished all of the work on the body. So after I finish the sleeve, I just have the um, like the bands and the ties to do, and then I will have a complete wrapped cardigan. So I came across a reel on Instagram showing how to finish off a fold over hem, and it is different from the instructions for the pattern. It's pretty typical fold over uh, fold over hem. You either bind off and then sew or you like fold and pick up a stitch from the inside of your sleeve and bind off at the same time. The latter, so I think that's what's in the instructions for this pattern is to bind off and pick up as you go. I don't like that method. I, I haven't done it enough to feel comfortable with it. I mean, I can do it, but in terms of creating an even tension throughout, um, I actually prefer to sew. And I found this reel on Instagram, which involves sewing, but not needing to bind off the end of the sleeve. So I thought I would share that with you. I can show you what it looks like on the other sleeve on the inside that's already done. And you can kind of see I mean, this isn't blocked. Like, would that be less notable when it's blocked? And then the inside is pretty darn clean. So you'll notice that that last stitch is twisted. And focus. <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, my allergies. I'm also like recovering from being sick. So my voice, sorry, doesn't sound the greatest right now. Um, so the last stitch ends up getting twisted as a result of how the live stitches are sewn in. And you might think, oh, you know, what if you do it the proper orientation? And I actually did that as an experiment on a whip I have going on for my daughter Darcy and so I did one sleeve with the twisted stitch and one sleeve without. It hasn't been blocked yet but I actually prefer the twisted stitch because it looks cleaner because without twisting that last stitch it's just a little bit looser just a little bit less tidy looking um, but it's definitely still passable. So yeah just throwing that out there as the options. <laughs> so um, in terms of breaking the yarn, um, it's pretty similar to the same amount of yarn you would use for like an Italian bind off, for example. You want at least like three and a half to four times the length or the circumference of the cuff and then put it on tapestry needle.
Hey guys, it's actually the next day. Um, I know I said I was going to show you how to do the sleeves and Darcy woke up from her nap. So it's now Thursday, May 18th. Anyways, I have finished um, both the sleeves. Those are now done. Um, it looks like they are pretty even. I have this thing where... <laughs> Especially for, I guess, almost all the sleeves I've done are ribbed sleeves. But one always ends up tighter than the other. And it's always, usually, the first sleeve cuff looks the nicest and the neatest. And the second one, for whatever reason, it's like I've relaxed too much. Maybe I'm overconfident. And it always ends up being a little bit looser. But anyways, it's usually something I can kind of fix with blocking. Also, just, you know, slightly stretch out the first sleeve, but anyways, with this fold-over hem style, uh, my sleeves are pretty much the exact same size, so I'm very happy about that. Um, fold-over hem looks very neat. Uh, yeah, so the thing with fold-over hem, you got to make sure you pick the right row to secure that edge to otherwise you get a little bit too much bubbling I have a little bit but I think it's something that I can block out but I'm pretty sure I picked the correct row um, it looks I think it looks pretty good so I have done pretty much all the knitting for the cardigan except for the bands and the ties but like the body is it's done and I have this much yarn left and I did weigh it and it's 162 grams the uh, skein is 250 so I have just over half a full skein here to do the whole bands and the ties so I feel like this should be enough, but double knitting maybe deceptively uses more yarn than I'm thinking. I also have to make long ties as well because this is a wrap cardigan. So yeah, but I'm excited to get started. The last time I read the instructions for starting to do the front and the button bands, I don't think I was in the right headspace because it seemed really confusing. So I'm hoping... I'm better mentally prepared for it this time. Otherwise, it might be something I wait till tomorrow. I'm pretty tired. Um, but I'm going to try it because I really want to. <laughs> um, another thing to note about these two skeins that I've been using, I can't recall. Um, I don't think I have come across a single knot in the skein. And... I'm also just thinking back of when I was winding this up. Like, I don't think there's been a single knot in the two skeins I purchased. So that's pretty awesome. Not a big deal if there are knots, especially for like a woolly, um, something that's on all animal fiber because I'm a splicer anyways. I would just splice the two ends. So not a big deal for me. But just thought I'd mention that because I know some people like to know those kind of things. So... I'm going to try to start part of the front band and I'll keep you guys updated on my progress as always. See you later. Good morning guys. It's Thursday. I think the date's May 24th. I could be wrong. Um, no, maybe it's the 25th. Anyways, I'm at a point that it's worth sharing because it was a point in the instructions that, well, made me scratch my head a few times and read, well, multiple times. And, um, the pattern's been good so far up until this point. I think just the way it was written, I just couldn't wrap my head around it. But it refers to, um, after you complete the double knitting for the front, so I've worked all the way around and this is where I finished 
where you start on this side here is you start with a provisional cast on and i'm saying that because it's important for what i'm about to say but i don't think it reveals um anything terribly unique about the pattern this is a paid pattern so i'd worked my way around finished the double knitting and ended here at which point this section of stitches was on my provisional cast on and all of my body stitches were on a stitch holder they were on hold now what the instructions didn't explicitly say which is why i couldn't wrap my head around it and i mean it was 10 30 at night when i was trying to do this um but it was saying to put these stitches that were provisionally cast on back onto the body needle and then continue where you left off and so i was like what why do i want to put it back on the body needle if it's going to be double knit so i want the double knitting needle um and so i think the instructions kind of just assumed that these body stitches that if you put them on hold like me were on hold on your actual working needles so what i think it needs to say is that you know if you put your body stitches on hold put those back on a needle and while you're putting those back on a needle put these stitches back on the needle now to make it less work for me because i had just finished my double knit band this way i only had these stitches on my needle but i had this really long circular needle so what i did was just i transferred all the body stitches onto this my double knit needle that i'm using sorry darcy's crawling across right now um no you're darcy you don't say hi darcy <laughs> um and then the next instructions where it says continue where you left off um and then you're working uh, a right side row to join the stitches from the double knitting to the body and then the instructions are fine after that so that is what i wanted to mention i hope that makes sense obviously if you haven't looked at the pattern or if you're not working on it it may not make sense but you happen to get to this point and you're not sure um that is what i did and that is how i felt about that part so i I'm ready to now do double knitting for the bottom edge of this wrap and uh, yeah I am so close I'm nearly there and I'll definitely be focusing on this and um, you making more progress on this because this is actually my only whip at the moment I finished my test knit finished my Friday tea so this is the only thing I've got working and Yes, this is what it looks like when your your child wants to bring everything from her room into your bed for snuggles. But it was for snuggles, so I allow it. Hey guys, time for another fit check. I am, let's just call it 99% done. That's just throwing out a number. I have just one tie left to do that would be on the left side of the cardigan. I am wearing my favorite high waist comfy jeans. These are like my sweatpants. I don't actually wear sweatpants. But you can see the cardigan is quite cropped um, considering I am wearing high waist jeans. I actually like that it's coming out cropped. I think it's more flattering and it's going to look great with dresses and help with defining my waist. The sleeve is coming in a bit short, but you can see that there's some rolling and some extra fabric that's bunched up at my shoulder, so that should relax after blocking, and the sleeve should come out to, I think, a perfect length. i liking how this has ended up not being so oversized, which makes me question the size that the model is wearing in the Camden photos. I'm actually loving how the color has turned out. I think it's just a perfect neutral um, beige, a little bit gray. The front bands, you can kind of see where the increases occurred and where 
stitches were picked up and hopefully after blocking it kind of you know morphs or blends in together it just looks like one wide band another note about this yarn i absolutely love how the color is just perfectly uneven it looks a bit tonal it looks kind of heathered just with some more gray and some more beige areas so in terms of the body length so i have knit size one exactly as instructed i have made no modifications to stitch counts i did not add any extra rows i did do the waist shaping as noted in the pattern i've got purple markers there noting the side seams and also helps me with where i will need to attach the second tie all in all, I'm feeling pretty good and I'm feeling pretty confident that this is going to block out pretty nicely. But just for reference, I will make sure I make detailed measurements um, to reference when I get this onto the blocking mat. And here is the final result. I'm really happy with how my wrap cardigan turned out. It did not have an extreme amount of growth, just enough. Um, to get my sleeves in the right spot and my overall body length hits me near my natural waist Which is flattering and works well with all my high waist pants that I wear I think it will also be quite flattering to wear with dresses the boxy crop fit is oversized on me, but not too oversized and I like that. I am really happy that I don't feel like I'm wearing a big heavy cardigan and that's part and due to the ecological wool it's it's light even though it's chunky it's light and fluffy it doesn't weigh me down and i still feel quite functional and stylish in this wrap i really like all the clean minimalist details that are on this wrap from the double knit bands to the fold over um, cuffs on the sleeves it really does have a nice contemporary look as for the yarn i'm really happy with this yarn and i'm so happy to have found this undyed sheep's wool the color is called beige and it certainly has this beige look to it and sometimes it looks gray but i just like how perfectly uneven heathered and tonal the overall color is and it's quite neutral and matches a lot of things in my wardrobe i'll add two timestamps for the areas in the pattern that could use some work critique number one and two other than that i recommend both the yarn and the levitate wrap pattern i'm going to leave you guys with some footage from our recent family trip to Galliano Island, which is part of the Southern Gulf Islands, where I, of course, brought along this wrap, and it was the perfect cardigan for the variable weather that we had. It was cozy and still made me feel stylish while we were on our little mini vacation. So thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed watching the making of my Levitate wrap, and I will see you in the next one. Bye!